Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker, the Product Specialist here at American RV in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And today I'm here to tell you all about the 2018 Shasta Oasis 25RK. This particular model is in the Mink interior. Let's actually start off right over here on the dinette. Uh, this is one of my favorite things in a floor plan is when a manufacturer is able to give you a campsite dinette. The reason is, this is where you'll generally be eating your breakfast, enjoying your morning cup of coffee, and you'll have a really big window right here where you get to look out at your campsite rather than stare out at your neighbors. This also does drop down into a bed if you need some additional sleeping space. You simply remove the legs here from the flanges in the floor as well as the flanges in the table. The table will then drop down, rest along these rails on either side of the dinette. You can take the back cushions, put it on top of the table, and that will create your bed there. You'll also notice right over here you have a big cutout. That will be for a TV if you do want one. Uh, the hookups are on this side in there. You can see you have some space up top as well as down below. So some extra storage or uh, extra place for some of your auxiliary equipment. If you take a quick look at the ceiling right here, you will see the uh, ducted AC with a quick dump. This is really cool because if you are coming in, it's a really hot day and you want just to cool down your main living area, you can have these vents right here open. Then when you're done uh, loading up and you're ready to have you know, the cool air in the bedroom and everywhere else, you can just close it off and it will continue to duct through the, uh, run through the ductwork in the camper. Uh, another thing, if we take a look uh, underneath the dinette, you will see there's an electrical outlet right down there. So if you need to plug in a tablet or laptop wire sitting at the dinette, you have a place in which you can do it. Now this is a rear kitchen model, so right back here is the fridge freezer. Uh, and I like when manufacturers do this too in a rear kitchen because generally, a lot of times when I'm coming in, I need to get into a refrigerator. You know, maybe I'm grabbing a beverage of sorts or maybe, you know, maybe a snack, something like that. But I like the fact I can come in, get right into the fridge and head right back out. So we open this up, you'll see uh, plenty of space in there. You have a nice little cutout in case you have some taller items. This unit does run off both propane and electric and also has automatic switchover. To the side, you see nice extra pantry space. Uh, this is one of the great things about a rear kitchen is you generally get more countertop and more storage and this one is no exception. So excellent pantry space running right through there. Some additional storage right over here. Then you have a cubby hole there underneath. Uh, right over to the side, you'll see you have some great storage down here too. Personally, I'd probably use these two bottom storage areas, this one and the cubby hole for uh, shoe storage. But again, you know, whatever you want to stick down in there, you can certainly do so. So you move further into the kitchen, you'll see you have good prep space here, especially right over here. This is probably where I do the main preparation of the food, but you do have a lot of space in here as well. Large double bowl sink with the larger bowl on the left, smaller on the right, and the high rise faucet there. And then over to this side, you have your three burner cooktop. You also have a couple electrical outlets built into the wall, so that way if you do need to plug in a coffee maker or toaster, blender, whatever it may be, you have a place to do that. Window here to let in that natural light during the day, LED lights to keep it nice and bright at night. Some additional storage right up top, open that up for you so you can take a look. You know, nice again, extra pantry storage. Your controls are up and out of the way too. I do like that. Even though this is a couple's coach, if you have you know kids or grandkids that are coming in, uh, because it's up high here, they're not able to mess with your power awning or you know turn on your water heater or anything like that. Right over to this side is the microwave, and then directly underneath is your hood with a light and fan. Uh, if we take a look underneath the cooktop, in lieu of an oven, they have given you additional storage. It's a great place to put pots and pans right there, but anything else, again, you want to throw in there, you can. And if we take a look underneath the sink, I like what they've done here as well. They did give you a shelf in the back, so you have a place to put your cleaning supplies. Uh, but up front, you have uh, some space there as well, so you do have a place in which you can put a smaller trash can. And then right over to this side here, you have a bank of three full extension ball bearing drawers, which is almost necessary in any uh, RV kitchen. And this allows you to have all your silverware, some of your bigger utensils like serving spoons, spatulas, things like that. And then whatever else you want to use the third drawer for, whether it's a catch-all, hot pads, uh, you know, again, you can't have too many drawers in your kitchen. If we take a look over to the side here, this unit does have a slide-out. Uh, it's a narrow slide-out. And that kind of, you know, has advantage, disadvantage, just like just uh, pretty much everything else in the RV world. 
So the, the disadvantage of having a shorter, a narrower slide out is the fact that it doesn't give you as much space, right? When this is out, if you have a really deep slide, you can put like a bigger sofa in here, you dine at, you know, really deep storage, things like that. But the advantage of not having a bigger slide is the fact that when this is in, it doesn't take up as much space. So this is still an extremely fully usable camper. If you need to stop somewhere, uh, you know, and get back to the bathroom or, you know, try to get into the bedroom, you have a second door, you can get in there. Uh, you can still use pretty much everything in this RV. So uh, again, you know, there definitely are some advantages to that. Jackknife sofa here, you know, this is uh, just a nice comfortable place to sit. It gives you a second seating area other than just the dinette. This also does fold down into a bed quite easily. And then right up above that, you have a big window again for natural light. Over to the side here, you have a little end table, which is cool with an electrical outlet. So it's a nice place to charge your electronics. And, you know, again, you need to plug in an iPad. You can do it there. Some additional storage right down below, some cubby holes. Maybe if you want to throw some books in there or something, uh, that would be a good spot for it. Then as you move over a little further, take a look at this. Great storage here too. Uh, you have a couple, you know, again, anything you want to do here, you can. If you want to put clothes in there, you can do that. Uh, you know, you can use it as pantry if you need uh, extra linen closet, right? Spot to put all your towels. You can do that as well. Two large drawers here underneath. You can see how nice and big those are there. Uh, right behind me is the master bedroom, but first I want to check out the bathroom here. So as we open it up, you see the foot flush lever toilet there uh, right in the front. Next to that is your sink top and vanity. You can see you have some cutouts, which are nice. So, uh, you know, it does give you cutouts. So you have a little room for your shoulders. And also, if you want to throw like a smaller trash can there, you can. Bigger, a bigger countertop than most. You see it kind of extends all the way over to the wall. So if you need a place to put down your curling iron, you can do that. You see the electrical outlet right there as well. Uh, you do have some storage down below as well as the storage up top. You see the mirrored medicine cabinet right there with storage behind that. And then over to this side here is the tub shower. Um, you'll notice that it does have your hand wand to make showering a little bit easier and a skylight up top, which does give you some extra headroom in case you are a little bit taller and also lets in a lot of natural light. So if we take a look at the bedroom here, you see the walk around camper queen. Uh, it is 60 inches by 74. So about six inches shorter than your standard queen, but that does give you the uh, space here to be able to wa easily walk around the bed. When I lift this up, you will notice there's storage underneath as well. It is strut supported, so it's very easy to get to. And this does give you access to your pass-through storage there too. On either side of the bed, you'll notice you have some wardrobe space, so good spot to hang the clothes. Uh, and then down on the wall, you will see there is an electrical outlet. You'll have that on both sides. You're able to plug in CPAP machine or cell phones. And you also have a dual USB port over here, so you can plug your electronics in here as well. Right up top, you see you have a nice shelf. And then directly underneath that are two LED reading lights. You'll have a window on either side, so you can have some cross ventilation. The one side is an emergency exit. And then right at the foot of the bed here is a location for your TV backer. They did put that in the wall. That way you know exactly where to mount it. And then the connections are right up top. Lastly, directly behind me is the secondary entrance. So that way if you do have guests and you wake up before they do or go to bed after they do, you can uh, enter or exit the camper without disturbing your guests. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a quick look at some of the outside features of the Oasis 25 RKS. Right up front's your propane tank cover. This does house two 20 pound tanks. Very easy to get to, just undo the two thumb screws, lift the door, and you can access those tanks. Right behind that, you have rails here for your battery. And then coming up the front, you have diamond plating, which will help protect your front end from some of the rocks and debris that will get thrown up by your tow vehicle. You also notice off to the side, you have a light there. So if you are hooking up or disconnecting at night, that will give you some extra visibility. So we come around to the side, we'll take a look at the pass-through. Notice that it does have a covered hinge on here, so you don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. And as we open it up, you can take a look right in there. You'll see that it is nice and open. And as I showed you when we were inside, you do have access from underneath the bed as well. And then, of course, the door on this side as well as the door uh, on the other side. 
two entrances into the 25 RKS. This is your secondary entrance here. This is the, uh, the one that leads up into the bedroom I had showed you. And then the back one is your main entrance, which will get you into the kitchen itself. Right here is the power awning. Just touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to have it go right back in. You'll see it does cover the majority of your camp space. Right over here, you have a couple electrical outlets. So if you need to plug anything in outside, you have a spot to do it. They do have two individual doors, which is kind of nice. That way, if it does, uh, you know, rain or anything and you just have the one that's being used, the other one is covered. Right down below, uh, if you take a look at the, uh, the axles here, these are easy lube axles, which are nice. Uh, that way it's less on the maintenance side. Also, you have nitrogen filled tires. So that way, hopefully it will hold the pressure for a longer period of time. Right back here, as I mentioned, this is your main entrance, two foldable steps, just like the front. And again, that will get you into the kitchen. So you make your way around to the back. You will notice you have a spare tire mounted on the bumper here. So it is very easy to get at. Hopefully you never have to use it, but in the event that you do, it's a great peace of mind knowing that it's riding right back here for you. Also, if you take a look up top in the center there, you will see that this one uh, is pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you do want backup camera, it's a lot less expensive to have that installed. Come around to the off door side here. Uh, this is where your 30 amp power cord is. Uh, it's all housed inside. Just pull it out and plug it in. City water connection right here. Underneath that is your fresh water for your tanks. That is a gravity fill. And then right over here to the side are your cable and satellite connections. You'll see underneath your termination is located right down there as well. Uh, your gray and black valves are next to that too. And then lastly, up in front of the slide, you do have Zamp Solar Prep. So if you want solar on this RV, all you have to do is uh, buy the portable panels, plug it in, and it will begin to trickle charge your battery. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2018 Shasta Oasis 25 RKS. This one is in the Mink interior. If you're interested in this RV and you'd like price and availability, I recommend you give us a call here at American RV, or you can take a look at our website, which is AmericanRV.com. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and I can't wait to see you on the road to freedom.